here we are in Rekha's very spacious office. <laughs> Welcome to the most ominous DJ booth you will ever see. There, there's no one here. How cute she was actually doing the Hulk Hogan um, yep. whipping up the crowd thing. She, she's every pro wrestler mashed into one. And what better fucking theme to have for like a wrestling themed boss? Real American? Nope, but it's something else. It's technically a cover of 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 an actual song. I forget <laughs> who the original band is, but I think it's like it, the cover's done by Elsinore. What was your plan for this, Peppermint? I don't know. Right? It's been working so far. You're paying me double for this. But I'm not paying you anything. Hey! I'm Still asking for double. Free radicals. So let's okay, not familiar with this one. It... It definitely has, like, wrestler promo energy. Oh, 100%. Like it, makes it makes sense that they went with this one. <laughs> so okay, this is yeah, the th first this is, fight with... This uh, is definitely, like, entrance ring promo music. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the fight with Rekka, the first of the League of Evil Executives. I love calling <laughs> it that because of how similar it is to the League of Evil X's. Just four letters. <laughs> And uh, best combo strategy is to just make liberal use of uh, Peppermint's uh, assist function, especially with the rhythm of speed hit. Uh, like, her attacks obviously are very easily communicated because of how, like, for attacks that have, like, a lot of long reach, you've noticed this, that there's always, like, either, like, a radius or, like, a rectangle that goes linearly in front and fills yeah. up with like a red segment and when those overlap that's when the attack actually takes place so Do peppermint's beat attacks interrupt because it looks like you've interrupted a few of her strikes so far yeah yeah they do have a lot of like stunt effect even though even though like the she doesn't have like a like a like a the stun gauge like the same way that all the other enemies do but, but obviously, like we saw with One Million, we gotta have multiple phases as the, as the song escalates. Of course. Yeah. Well, it's not the other juice. <laughs> and at that moment, um, several thousand people find themselves thinking, I hope this doesn't awaken anything in me. <laughs> So this is the sort of thing where, like, yeah, like, when she is electrified, it, it's designed, like, this, this boss, 100% is designed to hone in on the fact that you should be using your assist as much as possible by having challenges that, spe that are specifically tuned for Peppermint. Like, she mm. produces, like, that electric ground aura covers the entire arena, so you have to use those grapple points when they become available. And one of her end phases, she does get a shield, like an actual energy barrier, the same way that like the uh, that the big blue enemies, the baboos, they're called, yeah. because they're very monkey-like. But otherwise, like yeah, even the simple electric aura, you want to hang back from until then, because we're doing no damage naturally. Yeah, Peppermint's regular attacks um, when she's unshielded just seem to be doing like chip damage. Yeah, because the, the utility is much more important compared to the raw damage. And once you get it back to this, you can keep attacking like normal. And as long as you, you know, are you're either out of the way or you press dodge at just the right time, you know, when it's on beat, you know, you, you could be like as close to the, the point of attack as possible and be totally fine. You're going out with the trash. <laughs> yep. I don't have anything to say now. <laughs> I have one thing I could say about that. Uh, the amount of pipes that you have to dodge actually increases based on difficulty. So we were basically showing what it's like when you 
do it on the hardest difficulty starting out. I don't think it's any harder on Rhythm Master as far as the amount of shit she throws at you. It might just be the same either way. But yeah, you just want to like keep up the same game plan when you're like this early on. One important thing I should note that like uh, that took me by surprise and voided me of my no damage run the first time is that even though it does no damage, when she pulls out those pipes, if you're directly next to her, it causes knockback on you, which somehow counts as taking damage. Wow. So that's why I had to hang back at that very specific moment when she was going for the pipes. Yeah, kind of a big move. Yeah. And also, because I am having to do this no damage, I am having to miss out on a special attack she does. I think you'll see the wind up on it at some point during this phase, or it might have happened earlier. But she can get you in a pretty damaging command grab that has its own cinematic. <laughs> it fucks you up really bad. <laughs> but it's so cool. It's such a shame that like I, did, I couldn't really get a recording for it just because, like... I was already having to spend so much time anyway, like, splicing together so many pieces of footage to keep this no damage run intact. Yeah. But it's a good thing, at least when you're this early on, as always, you know, make use of your best reverb attacks, make use of peppermint uh, assists all the time. If you can, when she does, like, her forward charge, try to get it so that, like, She's close enough to one of the edges of the arena that she'll slam into it because you'll, she'll get the spinning stars. So, like, just keep that pressure at all times. When you get all of your tools and you're doing this again, like on the post game, obviously you're way more flexible. Mm. But, but seriously, it's still it's still fun enough to do even this early on because, seriously, this game actually nails how action games should be on the first playthrough. <laughs> Ah, uh, the old Pete Townsend. No, the other kind of Pete Townsend. Ah, right. Not there the you go. doing research one. Cool. Her personal pass key. Great job, Jai. I'm not gonna lie, that looks like a box cutter. A little bit, yeah. God, I don't wanna even I don't want to imagine what like Oh wait, I guess because of like everything having to have like the V branding of like the Vandalay logo probably wouldn't be a box cutter it would just be like a butterfly knife or some shit yeah even 808 is not impressed with chai being a dumbass <laughs> presumably it's what peppermint uses to cut her hair yeah like it was probably something that the be that this company makes where they're like here's the Vandalay butterfly knife except it actually doesn't fold like a butterfly knife it is just the V <laughs> And, you and cut also, yourself while holding it. And also, you somehow need to keep paying a monthly charge for it. Yeah. Rogueford, that that was his idea. This is the only way to recoup costs. Oh yeah, here they are. Uh, of course, Mimosa is doing the Mistral thing with the robots. Yep. <laughs> name's Chai, not Defect. Where's Rekka? Hmm. I hope you're happy about having your Scottish representation in oh, this game. Haven't you heard? Corsica Scottish. They're looking for a new production head. Is this some sort of joke? Oh, now this is a juicy meeting. Do you want me to reshit you? Damn it, Zanzo. <laughs> Zanzo, I think you're muted, honey. Oh. I was going to say... Corsica, get your people to production right away. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Send whatever you want. Send oh, look at... <laughs> look at 808 joining in. Being like, yeah, <laughs> we're hot shit. And if that's not enough, check out my arm. <laughs> Make a guitar and suck it Chai, Chai, shut up! Idiot. Come on. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, no, he deserved that one. Absolutely, yeah. Like, it, it, it's funny. Like, when I first saw Chai, especially, uh, like, when playing this game, and even, like, the trailer that that was used to announce the game, I was like, this character's gonna be so obnoxious. But he's like, 
Throughout this whole game, he is towing that line of being an obnoxious dipshit, but, like, his antics are funny because of just how so stupid he is. Pure of heart, dumb of ass. Secrecy is blown. I have to rethink my whole plan. There was a plan? Yes, a plan. Okay, I might have been on a power trip. I am sorry. But you got your data, right? Spectro? The data that said Vandalay can basically mind control you? I wasn't really listening. Oh. When right, do you ever thing. listen? <laughs> no, I mean, he's, you know, he's listening to the music at least. <sighs> yeah. God, I wish my cats were that hey. useful. Whoa, what are you. It syncs with Project Armstrong interface. It's a big ass USB yourself. port. <laughs> this is an Armstrong tag. It's more like a parallel plug. Yeah. It's not coming off. And with just a simple command. Don't you think that you were right all this time and I'm a stubborn loser. Also, Peppermint is way cooler than me. <laughs> yo, yo. Okay, I really hope that didn't awaken anything in anyone. Like you made me say that. No. Nope. Couldn't Vandalay have designed this for, you know, research or something? Only you wouldn't find this suspicious. The point is, they can. And I Him and most that. anyone else that, I like, that buys, like, right. modern technology products. <laughs> oh no! But I have no idea how to get I, I love that there's like a like a scratching guitar sound that's like very specifically timed to her creepy neck turn because she is going to murder you if you do not stick around. When when the head turn is accompanied by the sound of creaking metal, you might want to you might want to start agreeing to whatever they say. Oh oh yeah. Uh, ah, is the well, area around the couch more untidy than it was earlier? I don't think I've ever noticed a difference around uh, the couch specifically. I've always just, been more aware of the things that get added to, like, the surrounding areas of the hideouts, you know? Mm. Like the graffiti pictures. Yeah. Uh, it just looked like there was more junk around the the left side so of the couch. Like I can modify yeah. Your I, th I think that trash bin with the overflowing junk was always there, but if they actually add more over time to reflect Chai just uh, uh, setting up shop here, that'd be extra funny. <laughs> also extra relatable. what I was working on. Yeah. They're custom chips to boost some of your abilities. So here's another thing that we can spend plenty of our money on over time, but don't need to, uh, but like, much like with the special attacks, you kind of learn quickly like which ones suit your playstyle and you just make a beeline for those immediately and don't bother buying anything else until you're in the post game and are doing it for completion's sake. But we do get a free one to start. Was just about to ask if you needed to equip them or if they were passive buffs. Yeah, you have to equip them, and, like, you have to buy additional slots, which you can get a total of five eventually. And that's important because uh, when you upgrade your chips, which you can't do it now, but I think, but, like, later on, uh, uh, like, the idea is that as they upgrade in levels, uh, they increase in size and take up more slots. Hmm. So if you get a chip up to level three, that means you need to have three available slots in order to get the maximum effect. Gotcha. Yeah. Just looking back again through all the all the stuff we got so far, making sure that if anything has come up that I need. Here's another good. Uh, oh well, the, I just showed it briefly, but I was just trying to like quickly show off all the other stuff that Chai has. Like magnet backstab is what I was talking about, where it's like you want to press the button again after the grapple so you vault over their backside and like basically leave the enemy confused and open for a combo but one of but one of the uh other assist abilities that you can get is one where you hold the button to summon in like your care your assist character and it will produce a different attack hmm. that still ultimately gets you to like the same result but it's like in the case of peppermints it's like a huge blast radius from like a giant beam cannon that can hit multiple things around it as opposed to just targeting a specific bubble shield, basically. Yeah. Scrolling back through all of our rewards thus far. Look at that, 81. Nice. 81k. Yeah, like, like, I cannot emphasize enough how, like, 
how much like a fresh playthrough of this game changes like when you're actually aware of like all the different challenges on the wall of fame because yeah. there's a lot of them that are like and it's also kind of expertly designed in a way where the only ones we're able to achieve at this point, like in the first playthrough, are all ones that only provide us with gears, with money. The post-game ones will provide with additional rewards besides that, and they made sure that those challenges are only achievable once you are actually in the post-game to begin with. So there's no chance of like actually getting an extra currency way earlier than you're supposed to. Okay, that's... It's rare that you come across any games like this that do that. Yeah, like, again, like this, the more I dug into this game past, like, the the obvious kind of, like, back-to-basics nature of its combat mechanics, the more you realize just how well-rounded of, like, a package this game is and is why I love it so much. Even when other stuff from that year had other interesting, unique things to it, you know, like Wanted Dead with, like, its combat being not like anything else that other games are doing <laughs> but yeah it's in, it's it's incredible it's going to keep being incredible from here on out just you people wait <laughs>